Hello everyone, it's Chris Clark with DiscGolf.Law. I am coming to you with an update in the case of Natalie Ryan versus the PDGA and the Disc Golf Pro Tour. When the Disc Golf Pro Tour and the PDGA filed their response to Natalie's request for a temporary restraining order, they included a document that was signed by 33 current FPO players. The document was called the Stockton Declaration of Women's Professional Disc Golfers for Women's Rights and Protection of the Women's Category in Our Sport. As many of you know, we are currently in Stockton, California for the OTB Open, and we were able to observe some of the things firsthand this morning when Natalie Ryan teed off on the first card of the FPO division. Many of the FPO players that signed this Stockton Declaration are competing in the OTB Open. We observed today that when Natalie Ryan teed off on the first card, there were individuals in attendance that were wearing shirts and carrying signs that said 33 and me. Many of these people that were in the gallery were dressed in pink and black as a gesture of support to these 33 women that signed the Stockton Declaration. In addition, many of the competitors in the FPO division today at the OTB Open were also dressed in pink and black as a show of unity in the FPO division in support of these 33 signers of the Stockton Declaration. Yesterday, we updated you on the temporary restraining order ruling from the Federal District Court in Sacramento, California. Natalie Ryan had asked the Federal District Court to require the PDGA and the Disc Golf Pro Tour to allow her to participate in the FPO division in the OTB Open this weekend. The court granted Natalie's request yesterday on Thursday at 1.28 p.m. And so I wanna give you an update on what has happened since then. At 2.14 p.m., the defendants in this case notified the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals that they would be appealing the district court's ruling granting Natalie Ryan's temporary restraining order request. The lawyers for the defendants called Natalie Ryan's attorney and left him a voicemail uh, notifying him that they were filing an appeal. They also sent him an email saying the same thing. And at some point he acknowledged receipt of these messages. At 4.27 p.m., the PDGA's appeal was entered into the record. At 8.22 p.m. yesterday evening, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals acknowledged receipt of the PDGA's appeal. At 11.51 p.m. last night, the Disc Golf Pro Tours appeal was entered into the record. And at 8.10 a.m. this morning, the court acknowledged receipt of the Disc Golf Pro Tours appeal. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals required that Natalie Ryan's counsel respond to these appeals by noon Pacific time today, which is Friday, May 12th. At 12.50 p.m. today, Natalie Ryan's attorney's response to the appeal was entered into the record. You'll note that that is about 50 minutes after the deadline that was set by the court, although I don't think that there's really anything meaningful to be inferred by that. There is some documentation in the record that her attorney may have had some technical problems getting the filing submitted. I should note that these attorneys for the PDGA, the Pro Tour, and for Natalie Ryan are under enormous time pressure in situations like this. I have seen thousands of pages of documents in the record. And so it is a very tight time frame that they're operating under. And I think uh, it's impressive that they're able to form their legal arguments and draft these documents and get them submitted under such a tight deadline. I do wanna mention one legal issue, sort of nuanced legal technicality that is at play in this case, and that is whether the federal courts in California have jurisdiction over the Disc Golf Pro Tour. 
That was an argument that was made, and I'm gonna come back to that in just a minute because it is important. One issue that the defendants raised on appeal was the fact that the Unruh Act, the California Civil Rights Act, really is meant to only apply in California. However, the district court, when it granted Natalie Ryan's temporary restraining order, did not clarify in their order that it was meant to only apply in California. The defendants were making the argument that this was an error by the court and it needed to be clarified that this order granting the temporary restraining order was based on California law and therefore can only be applied in California. Now, if you watched our uh, recent videos, you'll know that one argument that the defendants made in this case was that the emergency temporary restraining order that Natalie was seeking was really an emergency of her own making because the PDGA's policy on transgender uh, women competing in the FPO division was adopted on December 12th, 2022. Natalie filed suit against the PDGA and the Disc Golf Pro Tour February 22nd, 2023, but did not file the motion for a temporary restraining order until May 3rd, 2023. And so that delay is what really created this emergency and therefore the court should not have treated it as an emergency temporary restraining order. Another argument the defendants made that I thought was interesting is Natalie Ryan did not sufficiently prove the defendants intentionally discriminated against her and that that is an, a required element for her to prove in a situation like this. They said the PDGA's policy that was adopted back in December was motivated really by changes in the transgender athlete policies adopted by the International Olympic Committee and not in response to anything pertaining to Natalie Ryan. Another argument I found interesting was the defendant said that the California Civil Rights Act actually does not preclude all forms of discrimination based on protected status. I mentioned in our previous videos, in California, your gender identity is a protected status. Another example of a protected status under California law and most other laws is age. And they gave the example that it is permissible for a senior living facility to have age-based restrictions on who can live there. And nobody objects to that because everyone understands that senior living facilities serve an important and desirable function in society. The fact that they will not allow people of a certain age to live there is permissible for that reason and not a violation of the California Civil Rights Act. They liken this situation where the PDGA has a policy that precludes transgender women from competing in the FPO division unless they meet certain criteria as a reasonable restriction and therefore permissible under the California Civil Rights Act. Defendants also said in their appeal that Natalie Ryan would not be irreparably harmed if her motion for this temporary restraining order was denied because she is still free to pursue her economic damages in her underlying lawsuit against the PDGA and the Disc Golf Pro Tour. They also made the argument that we've heard made several times in this case already, which is that Natalie is still free to participate in these tournaments, just in the mixed professional open division. Finally, the defendants argued that Natalie has not shown her interests in this case are aligned with the uh, public interest overall in California. So at the end of our last video, I asked everyone to share their comments and let us know if they think the court got it right. When Natalie Ryan's counsel filed a response to the appeal by the defendants, they essentially said, yes, the court did get it right. And this temporary restraining order should remain in place. Natalie's counsel said the issues raised by this appeal are properly addressed by the federal district court and not the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. He also made the argument that a temporary restraining order is not appealable and therefore the appeal in this case should be denied on that ground. Another argument that Natalie's counsel made was in response to a point from the Disc Golf Pro Tour and the PDGA that allowing Natalie to start competing in the FPO division now, partway through the season, 
would confuse the rankings and the point standings for this season. Natalie's attorney responded to that by saying, it's no more of an interruption than it is by allowing other players who don't participate in every Disc Golf Pro Tour event to play. The Disc Golf Pro Tour is not structured in such a way that they require all players to participate in every event. In fact, many players have taken some events off this season, and therefore Natalie is really in no different position than them. Just a few hours ago, the appeals court did rule on the Disc Golf Pro Tour and the PDGA's appeals of this temporary restraining order. The court's order granted the appeal from the Disc Golf Pro Tour and denied the appeal from the PDGA. Now, at first that seems very confusing. It was confusing to me as well. In reading it and studying the language of the order, the explanation from the court was that it was their understanding the Disc Golf Pro Tour would not allow Natalie to continue to participate in the FPO division in the OTB Open without the court requiring them to do so. And therefore they were granting the Disc Golf Pro Tour's appeal to stay the temporary restraining order. So when they got to the appeal from the PDGA, they said this, if the Pro Tour is not going to allow Natalie to compete in the OTB Open, then the PDGA cannot prove the required element that they would be harmed. And therefore, there is no reason or no basis for them to grant the PDGA's appeal. My interpretation of this was that the court was not requiring the Disc Golf Pro Tour to continue to allow Natalie to compete in the FPO division in the tournament. Just a few moments ago, we were made aware that a notice has been published from the Disc Golf Pro Tour, and I'm going to read part of it now to conclude this video. The Disc Golf Pro Tour will follow the court's ruling and enforce its gender eligibility policy, which will disallow Miss Ryan from continuing competition in the OTB Open. So in summary, it appears that the Disc Golf Pro Tour's appeal was successful and that Natalie will not be competing in the next two rounds of the OTB Open. Let us know what you think. Give us a comment, like, follow, and thanks a lot for watching.